I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand how to find domain and range of a reciprocal transformed trigonometric function. We are given y equals to minus 3 cosecant 2 theta minus pi by 5 minus 1. Let us find out domain and range for this function. We can rewrite this function as y equals to minus 3 divided by cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, sine and we can factor 2. So you get 2 times theta minus pi by 10 minus 1. So that is the function. Now as far as the range is concerned, we know for cosecant theta, uh, what is the range? Range is that y is greater than or equal to 1 or y is less than or equal to minus 1. Now in this case, we see the transformation which is y values get multiplied by minus 3 and then you have to take away minus 1. So these values get modified. So let's do this math here. So we get y. When you multiply by minus 3, you have to change the sign also. Less than or equal to minus 3 times 1 is minus 3 minus 1. And that is y is less than or equals to minus 4. On the other hand, if I multiply this by minus 3, first I have to change the sign. So y is greater than or equal to minus 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. Plus 3 minus 1, let me write 3 minus 1. So what we get here is y is greater than or equals to 2. So the range for this function is, is y values will be uh, equal to y belongs to real numbers so that y is less than or equal to minus 4 and y is greater than or equal to 2. So that is how we get the range. Now to find the domain what we have to do is we have to consider the transformation of the sine function. Now let me explain you this a bit since it is not so uh, apparent right. So what we will do is we will kind of sketch it. To explain the whole idea. So sine function basically is kind of like this where the zeros are at 0 pi and 2 pi correct. Now when I say sine 2 theta then the zeros are horizontally compressed and they will be appearing at so this 0 pi appears as pi by 2 and the other 0 2 pi will appear at pi. So for the next wave, they will again appear at these points. So what we will notice is that the next 0, 3 will now appear here, correct? So, so the zeros will appear at pi by 2 and its multiples. Do you see that? So pi by 2 plus n multiples will be the zeros now. For sine 2 theta, right? So sine 2 theta zeros will be at pi by 2. Let me actually sketch sine 2 theta for you. So it'd be two waves within within this. Correct. It will be kind of like this. So now the zeros, this is sine 2 theta, will be separated not by pi but by pi by 2. Do you see the difference between the zeros will be pi by 2. So it is 0 is at pi by 2, the first one, plus n pi by 2, right? So that is how you get zeros, correct? But when we translate it, pi by 10 units to the right, in that case, the first zero itself gets translated by pi by 10. So what we get here is that pi by 2 plus pi by 10 will be my first zero. And then we have to add n pi by 2, correct? So that is how we are going to get zero. So let's calculate. So what is pi by 2 plus pi by 10 that is equals to so 10 is the common denominator this gets multiplied by 5 5 pi plus pi which is 6 pi by 10 okay so it is 6 pi by 10 which we can keep as such or we can also simplify it and write this as 3 pi by 5 okay no problems plus n pi by 2 right plus n pi by 2 where n belongs to integers right so that is the new location of translated sine function the denominator 
Now those zeros will result into vertical asymptotes and so we have restriction. So the domain for our function is going to be, domain of this function will be, let's say theta is the angle. So theta belongs to real numbers where theta is not equal to 3 pi by 5 plus n pi by 2 where n belongs to integers. So that is how you can get the domain for the function. I hope that helps you to understand how easily we can find domain and range for a reciprocal trigonometric function. I hope that helps. Thank you.